Hey everybody, Dr. Sean Tasson, America's Holistic Gynecologist, and I wanted to talk today about testosterone placement, especially obviously for women, and why there are currently about 10 to 12 testosterone type replacements for men that are FDA approved, but absolutely zero for women. Uh, that have been FDA approved. And I want to also talk about why, why is testosterone important for women? So if you have any questions about testosterone, testosterone replacement, the way to do it for women, how to do it for women and the methods, because there's only one method of hormone replacement for women that sucks. And that would be pellets or injections. Pellets, and injections for testosterone or any other hormone. I will say this until the cows come home. Horrible, horrible form of hormone replacement for women. Dangerous, too many risks. The levels go way too high. Uh, you can't control the state of release despite what these companies tell you. Pellets and injections for women are just a money grab by doctors. Doesn't mean that testosterone is bad. It means that the pellet or the injection is bad. Testosterone in and of itself for women, super important. If you think about it, testosterone is actually the highest circulating hormone in the female body. You might think it's estrogen, but it's actually testosterone. And testosterone is far and away the number one hormone imbalance in women at any age group. I've seen it. I've had 30,000 women take my hormone replacement quiz and it's far and away the number one hormone imbalance. So let's talk about testosterone. What does low testosterone feel like? You want to take a nap around four or five in the afternoon. You're just kind of fatigued. You're sluggish, um, hair thinning. You feel just like a decreased drive, decreased desire, decreased motivation. It's just you're not the same person that you were when you had higher levels of testosterone. And keep in mind, a free testosterone, which is the one that actually matters, it's not the total testosterone that matters, it's the free testosterone that matters. And a free testosterone in most labs, the, the normal range is gonna be somewhere between 0.2 and 6.4. That is a 32 fold range. I mean, it's like from here to freaking from New York to California, for goodness sakes. That being said, most women will come in that I see probably somewhere between 0.2 and 1.0. Now, some women will have a mid-cycle spike. You're going to get an LH surge during your cycle. LH is going to stimulate the theca cell inside the ovarian cyst that's going to make more testosterone. When you're ovulating, because as a species, we want you to have sex when you're ovulating because that's how you get pregnant and we propagate the species. So for women, they have a testosterone spike when they ovulate. But if you draw it any other time in the cycle, day 21, day one, whatever, testosterone won't be affected by the LH surge. And so you can see what the levels are. Testosterone in and of itself is usually in most women that I see in the clinic, somewhere between 0.2 and 1.0. Now, if your testosterone is 1.0, somebody could look at it and say, it's in the normal range for a free testosterone. And they're right, it is. But I could multiply that sixfold and it would still be in the normal range for a woman. So you're technically, you're in the normal, which is in the house, but you're kind of laying on the floor in the basement. So let's say you come in and you have all the symptoms and your testosterone is 0.4. What do we do? Well, my book, The Hormone Balance Bible, I have the two archetypes. I have too little testosterone, which is the nun, and I have too much testosterone, which is the warrior. Now, too much testosterone has its own symptoms and side effects, but let's focus on low testosterone for this little talking point. And low testosterone, we talked about the symptoms. You can try to raise your testosterone naturally by increasing protein intake maybe doing some, you know, do some weightlifting, do some high intensity interval training. You can try to boost your testosterone naturally. The problem is if you already feel like complete trash because your testosterone is low, 
the last thing you want to do is go lift weights and do high intensity interval training. So it's a catch 22. What I would prefer to do is look at women in age groups. So in the younger female population, the number one cause of low testosterone is going to be birth control pills. Birth control pills raise a protein in your blood called sex hormone binding globulin because the estrogen levels go up. When estrogen goes up, sex hormone binding globulin goes up and then free testosterone drops. When free testosterone drops, you have all these symptoms. Got a question. I just got the feminine pause. Will that help with testosterone? It will definitely help with the symptoms of testosterone. Uh, I think um, maca is a great um, addition to any woman suffering from minor hormonal issues, and it, it definitely could help with testosterone. So it's worth a try. Um, I'd probably give it one to three months to really give you the satisfaction that you've given it a good run. Um, is transdermal DHEA a better alternative or transdermal pregnenolone at 67? There's absolutely no reason usually why at 67 you couldn't use testosterone. There's really no contraindications unless your testosterone is already too high or something along those lines. DHEA, the problem with transdermal DHEA or oral DHEA for that matter, is you can't control where it goes. DHEA is the step right before testosterone and estrogen, and DHEA can turn into any of those two. So what if you took it and it went purely to estrogen? Pregnenolone is even worse because if you give pregnenolone, pregnenolone is literally at the very top of the hormone cascade and it can turn into almost anything. It could go into progesterone, cortisol, it could go into estrogen, can go into progesterone, can go into testosterone. So you really can't control pregnenolone. So I usually don't use pregnenolone in anybody because I can't tell you where it's going to go. So I'd rather use just testosterone. I would use DHEA if the DHEA was low, and if the testosterone was low, I would use testosterone and DHEA. That's how I would do it. Um, so what are the ways you can use testosterone? Most testosterone replacement is going to be either a topical cream, a sublingual tablet, or an oral capsule. Now, there are companies out there that like to promote these things called pellets, BioT, Avexpel, a bunch of them. And it's a pay to play. And I've talked about this many times before. Pellets are horrible. They're a horrible means of hormone replacement. It's a money grab. In my opinion, it's malpractice. I don't think that pellets should be used on women because they should be used only on animals, not humans. And the reason for that is that the levels just go simply way too high. I've seen women who have levels five to six times the normal for a female. And that's when you can start getting some negative side effects, deepening of the voice, hair growth, clitoromegaly, hair growth and clitoromegaly. I mean, um, voice changes in clitoromegaly can be permanent. So you really want to be careful about taking too much progesterone. Pellets are four times the cost of a topical cream. They hurt when they put them in. They bruise. You can't get them out if you don't like them. They're in there. Most of the time, it's three to six months before they're out of your system, so it can last a while. Women spit the pellets out. They put them in the skin and your butt, and sometimes they fall out. The doctors, in my opinion, that do pellets don't really understand hormones because if they did, they wouldn't be overdosing you on hormones. It makes absolutely no sense other than they're persuaded by the company who is telling them how much money they're going to potentially make. Again, I think pellets are malpractice. I think they shouldn't be used and I think they're horrible. So I would use testosterone cream to start with. I usually follow up my patients in about five to six weeks and see how they're feeling. If they haven't felt any change, then I'll switch them to a sublingual tablet because ultimately some women just don't absorb very well. And so they have problems. They just don't feel like they're getting the kind of the bang for their buck as it were. So testosterone, you, when you have your blood checked, you want to check a total testosterone, a free testosterone and a sex hormone binding globulin. You could also add a DHEA. Some people will order antinione or dihydrotestosterone. Testosterone can break down into dihydrotestosterone. Dihydrotestosterone or DHT is a very powerful androgen and it can cause male pattern baldness. 
I've never seen this in a woman that's using a cream, but it certainly could happen in a woman that's using a pellet. Another reason not to use it. If you have any questions about testosterone, please leave them in the key, in the question box. I'll, uh, I'll try my best to answer them. If you are not seeing this live, then you can always just leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you and answer as best I can. I can't obviously give out personalized medical information. You know that. This is also not medical advice to you in particular. This is just how I run my practice here in Austin and how I work with the women that I see in the office and how I prescribe testosterone. It may not be right for you. Um, it may not be something that you need. I would say though, out of the women I see, if I saw 10 females in the office for hormonal issues, probably eight of them would have low testosterone. And the last thing I want to say about testosterone Having a maximized testosterone level won't necessarily make you more sexual. The female sexual response, the first step is arousal. And if you can't get into that first step because you're fatigued or you just don't feel like it, you don't have the motivation, the drive, the desire, then testosterone could help with that part. It might help with the, the edginess, the, the grit, the desire but it may not make you more sexual because sexuality and the sexual response for women is pretty involved. It, it includes relationships, stress, money, sleep, kids, you know, there's so many things. And if I were to ask 10 women um, where sex falls on their list of things to do that particular day, I'm also almost willing to bet none of them would put sex in the top three, whereas men, we put it on there. For sure. So maximizing your testosterone may help you with fatigue and just generalized feeling. It might help elevate your mood a little bit, might get you a little motivated. And because of that, you could have a better sexual response. You might feel more sexually active, but it's not necessarily the end all be all. So I just wanted to throw that out there as well. Um, I'm doing these live streams to just generate some topics. If you have things you want to talk about, let me know in the comments. I'm going to start doing these maybe one, a couple times a week, two, three times a week, just to hit some small topics and do 10 to 15 minutes like we're doing today. So have a great day. Um, stay tuned. And I'm here to answer your questions. I'm here to fill you in on the, the hormone replacement therapy saga. If you want to start by getting the hormone balance Bible that you can find on Amazon, it's a two-year-old book, it's 500 pages. I break down the top 12 hormone imbalances into archetypal narratives, so it makes them easier to understand. Hope to see you online. I'm on Instagram at Sean Tasson, MD. I'm licensed in about 26 states, including California. So if you want to call the office, it's 512-956-0296. I'll talk to you later.